thanks for this uh, great opportunity. And I would like to share with you the World Heritage and also the Cultural Landscape Conservation in China. Of course, we all know World Heritage Convention and World Heritage Cultural Landscapes. However, World Heritage is a product of a Western culture. So China was a uh, later comer in this field, having been ratified to the convention only in 1985, 13 years after the convention was created. So China was always catching up. Uh, by 2021, there are 56 World Heritage properties in China. And in the 38 cultural heritages, there are five cultural landscapes. That's a general information. Look back of the landscape related heritage conservation in China. I would like to divide the history into four stages and will introduce you one by one. The first one is before 1985, I call it as a pre-World Heritage stage. At this stage, culture and nature were harmoniously interweaved in the properties under the protection of the national system. Of course, they benefit from the Chinese uh, traditional philosophies. And the central theme of the Chinese philosophy is a relationship uh, between culture and the nature, uh, and the human beings as well. The central spirit of Chinese philosophy is in both Confucianism and Taoism is the oneness between nature and the human beings. So uh, in one word, is being harmonious with nature. So this is a uh, Chinese traditional achievement in uh, landscape paintings. And uh, the Chinese uh, brought this ideal, um, ideal word into the worldly life, worldly paradise in practice. That's Chinese gardens. And also Chinese is an agriculture ancient civilization. The land use the patterns of agriculture um, greatly influenced influence the Chinese gardens, also Chinese garden cultures. Also, there is a very deep relationship between Chinese and nature. Mm. There are many religions in China, and also a lot of cultural constructions in natural settings. So all these were widely recognized and acknowledged by international society, and also in World Heritage cultural landscapes. The second stage is from 1985 to 2010. So seems China has abandoned cultural landscapes, but China never nominated one cultural landscape to World Heritage during this time, because there was cross-cultural confusions, especially in mixed heritage and cultural landscapes. China took it for granted that in mixed heritage, nature, culture, landscapes into mixed heritage. And they didn't know what's happening in the world about the cultural landscape. And then later they refused to accept the terminology, the term of cultural landscape because they think that's problematic of this term, put culture in front of landscape because all landscape were culture. Another influence of what heritage conservation is uh, the Preferring of uh, wilderness and pristine nature. And these divided and separated cultural nature conservation in China. The two typical cases, uh, Lushan and the uh, Sacred Mountain, Buddhist Mountain, Wutai Mountain, they were inscribed as a World Heritage Cultural Landscape, but they were, both of them were nominated as uh, mixed heritage by Chinese state government. And the separation of culture and landscape occurred uh, in religions mountain, Wudang mountain. The ancient buildings were separated from the natural settings and were inscribed as cultural heritage. 
and there are nine valley, nine village of valley. This cultural landscape was protected as a pristine nature. At this stage, I wrote quite a few uh, papers for uh, in, in English for uh, in the international context to fight for the preserving China's cultural landscape. But unfortunately, it seems at that time I was quite low quite lonely because uh, I was early Chinese uh, to talk about this. The third stage is 19. This 10 year is very, very important for the rise of cultural landscape in China because it towards the, at this stage, China realized and got familiar with uh, what heritage cultural landscape and understood what cultural landscape talking about. So now we didn't mind uh, about the term, no matter it is cultural landscape or landscape, we understood we are talking about the same story, the interwave interaction between culture and the nature. You have so tried. Okay, yeah. thank you. And uh, at this stage, 2007, uh, we published the first uh, special issue of cultural landscape uh, uh, in National Journal Chinese Landscape Architecture and ICC annual meeting held in Hangzhou and especially important for the nomination and its inscription. This was the first uh, uh, cultural landscape nominated by China itself. And these are contributions of our committee members like Luigi Ken Taylor, uh, Maggie Rowe, of course, uh, and uh, Monica Ron Owens, Jen Leno, Mr. Sugio, and later Matthew de Roland Ling, Carrie uh, Noron Brandon, uh, Leonella. 1917, I convened and established the Cultural Landscape Scientific Committee of uh, Chinese Society of Landscape Architecture. And now we have 147 members. The last stage is from 2017 to now. Now we face new challenges because China, the, the state party is creating the new national protected system. But this system called a natural protected system. So there is very little room, very limited room for cultural landscape to sit in. So it is urgent for us to establish a national system for conservation of cultural landscape. So another very worrying thing is the reprovering of a wilderness in China. From the uh, academic report, I think it's a very shocking report. The wilderness patches cover up to 42% of China's territory area. Is that possible? China is a country with 5,000 year history and in the international culture, connecting culture nature context. And now they say that China, you know, has such a large area of wilderness. Disease is very <laughs> worrying we're facing. It's anyway, I, yes, I just uh, want to thank all of my colleagues. Thanks for your support. and. Uh, very honored to be one of you, proud of uh, my committees. Thank you very much.